Okay, so the demographic transition model is a really classic piece of population geography that tries to explain how a country's population changes over time um, as a result of economic development. So there's five stages on the model. The first stage being furthest back in time or the most primitive society. And um, the first line I'm going to draw on here is a death rate line. So at stage one, so furthest back in time or maybe a rainforest tribe, um, the idea here is that the death rate is really high. It's high because of lack of access to um, medicine, to vaccinations. So if um, someone catches a cold even or drinks dirty water, gets cholera, they're going to die. There's no treatment for them. So you've got a low life expectancy, high death rate, high infant mortality rate. However, then maybe there's an injection of aid or the uh, society or the country develops, they start to get things like vaccinations and um, start to get access to basic medical care. And over time, the death rate starts to drop. And then you eventually get to stage four, which is where the UK would be. And you have got a low and steady death rate because we've got medicine to sort out all of our problems. So a good example of a country uh, that's maybe in stage two would be somewhere like Ethiopia. Um, they've still got a relatively high death rate, but it is falling because they are getting access to things like uh, medicine and vaccinations. A good example of a country in stage three would be somewhere like India. That's much more developed. It's starting to get, it's, it's got a lot more access to um, uh, good healthcare, doctors, vaccinations, and so therefore the, um, and clean, clean running water. And so therefore the, the death rate is, is much lower, still not quite um, level of the UK yet though. So the second line that we need to draw on here is for birth rate. And in stage one, the birth rate is also high. This is because of several factors. Firstly, there is a lack of access to contraception and family planning. So um, people don't have control over how many children they, um, they have. Um, in addition to that, most people in these sorts of societies are um, involved in agriculture and it, it pays to have lots of lots of children so you've got more people to work on the land and bring in an income and then finally because there's the high death rate and people know several of their children will probably die young they have more children to compensate so in stage one the birth rate is also high the main difference between stage one and stage two in terms of birth rate is in stage two, the birth rate also remains high. And that's because there is a bit of a lag time whereby when a country is developing, the priority is to stop people dying. So people aren't going to start using family planning and contraception unless they know their children are going to survive. So it's always the death rate that gets tackled first. So there is this lag time where kind of people almost don't cotton on that their their children are, aren't dying or they you know they they're not going to do that until they know they're going to survive in addition to that just because they've started to develop and people are staying alive doesn't mean all of a sudden people aren't farming anymore so they still need people to work on the land um and so it's a it's an economic in incentive and all, they haven't quite got the access to the, the contraception However, by stage three, the country is really starting to develop now. Um, they uh, are getting access to family planning, contraception. People are starting to migrate from the countryside into cities. They're no longer all farming. People are working in factories, so they don't need to have as many children. And so as we move into stage three, the birth rate also starts to fall this time. And by the time you get into stage four, you've got this nice low birth rate. Um, and this is where the UK is. The birth rate notice is still slightly above the death rate. So the population will continue to increase, but only very slightly because it's only slightly above. So by stage four, you've got low, steady um, birth rate and also death rate. Now, stage three is classically where India is because they're now really tackling their birth rate. They're bringing fertility rates down from the average woman having, say, six or seven um, children in their lifetime to now maybe only having three or four. So they're, they're really making some progress. But the significant thing here is throughout stage two and three, because the birth rate is higher than the death rate, you're going to have a population increase. So 
anywhere where you have more people being born than dying, the population is going to go up. So the other line we need to draw on here is a line for total population. So in stage one, the total population is going to remain low and steady because births cancel out deaths. However, in stage two, because the birth rate's higher than death rate, death rate's falling, the population starts to increase. And that continues through to stage three, but then levels out in stage four because now the birth rate um, and death rate are both low. Now you might have noticed that there is also a stage five on this model. This is an, a new stage that had to be added. And the reason for that is because the although the death rate remains low and steady in stage five, there are some countries in the world, such as Japan, I probably shouldn't have drawn that there, where the birth rate has now got so low that it's actually dropped below the death rate. And that causes what's called natural decrease. So over here, we have natural increase where the birth is above deaths. Down here, we have natural decrease. The population is starting to tail off and drop. So that is the demographic transition model. It shows how um, population changes over time from primitive societies and LEDCs through to NICs, newly industrialized countries here in the middle, like India and China, through to MEDCs like the UK and finally Japan. So go away and learn it.